Liz Crosby here with another YouTube video. Today we're going over breaking the wheel part two. Last breaking the wheel installment, we did mostly handstand, work in handstand, and then graduated to Urdhva Dhanurasana, upward facing bow. In this video, we will be working mostly in forearm balance, Pinchamayarasana, the feathered peacock, and working toward Dwe Pada Vibrita Dandasana. So we're going to be a little bit closer to the ground, which means the energy is going to travel a shorter distance. So we'll have more ample energy conduction into the shoulder girdle, which will yield more tapas, more heat for purification, and it will create more strength as we can really fine tune the muscle engagements surrounding the shoulder joints. So hope you guys enjoy. So just a quick thing to note, the skin on your forearm, it moves a little bit. So start with your forearms, almost in a trapezoid, elbows encroaching towards midline, and then the elbows will naturally slide out to a perfect square. We also want the gaze to be directly between the thumbs so that our heart space is over the center of our foundation, not over the elbows. So, so often people will look in between the elbows and then their center of mass is no longer in the center of their foundation and it is no longer a stable posture. So bring the gaze to the space between the thumbs, initially to start. Once you get super powerful and strong in this posture, the gaze won't matter. Now, coming into dolphin pose. So we'll start by coming into dolphin pose. And you can lower the forearms down to the ground in your tabletop pose. Again, wrap the elbows in tight, and the elbows will naturally slide out a little bit. And then tuck your toes and rise your hips up. And yes, we are using the wall, just like we did in breaking the wheel part one. So you can stay here. Maybe start to walk the feet up the wall. Coming into your forearm, L shape. Concentrate on pulling energy up through the midsection, coursing the foot and ribs together. You're pushing the floor away with your forearms and receiving that energy back up through the spinal column, out through the tailbone. Maybe one leg extends up. And just hold, building strength, building heat. And switch, opposite leg extends. And again, Finding your balance, but don't worry about coming off of the wall quite yet. It is so awkward to cartwheel out. So stay connected to the wall, although you can get light in the foot. And then slowly lowering it back down again. Take a moment in your child's pose. And then rolling the spine up through to seated right away using the heat that we've created. We'll do a back bend in a comfortable orientation. So turn to face the wall, kneeling. Give yourself some space between your knees and the wall. And now walk your hands up the wall and melt your heart towards the wall in a puppy dog shape. Try and get your chin to the wall. Maybe your whole chest meets the wall. And when you're complete, Slowly peel yourself up off of the wall. Okay, so now we're going to actually attempt the forearm balance. So give yourself about a shin's distance away from the wall. So you know if you bend the knee once you arrive in your forearm balance, that you're exactly a shin's distance away. And you can find the straightest line. And we'll just start with the simple traditional forearm balance initially to start. So again, give yourself about a shin's distance away from wall. Tuck the toes, walk it in, in your dolphin pose. One leg can extend up, kick towards yourself, find the wall. Again, about a shin's distance away. And then slowly see if you can find the balance and float that other leg up. Again, the gaze can stay between the thumbs initially to start. It will help you to find your center of mass directly over your foundation. Concentrate on coursing the floating ribs together and magnetizing the sternum towards your pubic bone. Squeeze legs together and reach out through the balls of the feet. 
You can flex pointer point. I am choosing to point here. A couple more deep Ujjayi breaths. Breathe into that space. And again, when you're complete, slowly lowering it back down. Take a moment, if you'd like, in your child's pose. And now striking while the iron is hot. So if you want to, you can repeat the puppy dog, but we're just kind of going over kneeling variations of back bends utilizing wall. Because of course you can draw energy from the wall and accentuate the back bend. So kneeling, facing the center of the room now, hands can come to hips. Make sure that you're engaging the large groups, large muscle groups of the legs, quads and hamstrings, lower abdominals especially, with these little hip dips. And then once you have that engagement, hands can come to your lower back, push your pelvis towards the center of the room, puff the chest. Maybe one hand comes to a wall followed by the other. And here you can actually push your hands into the wall and puff the chest open. Engage your core to rise it back up again. And gently take a seat. And of course, this is just an introductory video. Of course, you can take that down into eventually Kapatasana, which is the full pigeon pose, right? Most people know Ekapada Rajakapatasana, which is one foot, right? It's half pigeon, Ekapada. So full pigeon is walking it all the way down and catching your feet. So now moving on. <laughs> We've been doing just straight up and down so far with the inversions with a nice complement with our back bends. Now let's do an inverted back bend. And this is why this is so powerful for breaking the wheel, so to speak, really opening up the thoracic spine, concentrating that energy on the thoracic spine because you are building strength as you are creating flexibility. And it is a very delicate line to toe. So we're going to start with the hollow back, of course. And notice that you're able to pull more energy up in the hollow back and forearm balance than maybe perhaps in your handstand hollow back. That is, again, the magic of forearm balance, taking away the radius and the ulna. We're just going through the humerus bone. So you have more rooting and rebounding forces, and also you have more surface area in your foundation. The whole forearm and your hand is a part of the foundation. So this one take nice and close to the wall. And remember, when you get closer to the wall, you don't need as much of a hop. So just hop a little bit and you'll find the wall most definitely. And again, you can come right up next to the wall for this one. Maybe interlace the fingers if you'd like. Press the palms together. Bring your knuckles right up to the floorboard. Tuck your toes, walk your feet in. And then a little tiny hop takes you up. Try to kick with the other leg as well so you're switching legs. Make your way to the wall space. Now from here, then you can't find your straight up and down. And then when you're ready, we're working into the hollow back. So if we can come to the wall, like an Utkatasana chair pose, or if you prefer like a goddess squat, whichever you prefer, and you're kind of delicately using your feet to ricochet like a boomerang, the energy through the legs, through the knees and back into the pelvic bowl. Eventually you'll be able to sit your hips all the way down onto the wall. And so this is your hollow back. Feel that hollowing out action taking place here. It is nice to extend the legs and just let yourself melt into the shape. It's also fun to see if you can find the balance pausing in your hollow back here. Again, that zigzag shape with the energy culminating in a thoracic heart space. See if you can flip the feet off of the wall. And we are utilizing the chin lock here. So pulling the gaze through all the way, gazing towards the center of the room. And when you're complete, gently release. Absolutely exquisite. Love, love, love that shape. It is amazing. 
So I did mention that we were working towards Dwe Pada Vibrita Dandasana, and I actually like, it's almost for me like dipping my toes in the water in my back bending department, right? Because your heart is like a massive ocean and we're just diving, but we're only diving as far as the body will allow, honoring the body, practicing ahimsa, non-harming. So this is kind of my, before I really get into my deep dive, it's like, my dipping of the toe into the water. So I know for a fact that my deep core muscles are engaged for the deep dive, right? I have enough air in my tanks to go in the, on the dive. And I know how deep I can go really as a, as a byproduct of, of where I'm at with this, this next posture. So this again is going to be an accompaniment with wall initially, and then eventually start to work off of the wall. But the, the magic of hollow back is that it trains your muscles surrounding your lumbar spine to engage so that the spongy intervertebral discs in your lumbar don't get compressed. So again, really prepping us for a deep dive into our back bending practice. All right, so now we'll give ourselves a little bit of space away from the wall. We're still going to come into Dwe Pada Vibrita Dandasana, but we're coming into Dwe Pada Vibrita Dandasana from hollow back. So and you'll notice that the curvature of the spine, the orientation of the humerus head bone in the shoulder socket is exactly the same as your Dwe Pada Vibrita Nandasana, uh, as, as you'll see in just a few moments. This is why you should also work forearm balance next to the wall, because in case you flip over, you know you'll be able to land in a Dwe Pada Vibrita Nandasana, uh, as opposed to working in the middle of the room, if you don't know that you can fall into that posture, usually you veer off to the side and cartwheeling out of form balance is incredibly awkward and it can cause uh, damage to occur. So really work next to the wall. I highly, highly recommend. So if you, if you do have a split moment where you know you've lost your balance, you know for a fact that you can flip over into this back bend safely. Okay, so that being said, again, ahimsa, it's really, really important. Safety first. <laughs> I am a burner, but I am all about that safety. We are the whole universe, yes? All right, so sliding the forearms back a little ways from the wall this time. Again, take it up, find the wall. We have a little bit more space this time, so you can slowly track the other leg down the wall. And feel free to use one leg as the wall anchor as one foot comes down to the floor. And just hang out here. I love to kind of shift side to side, forward and back in my shoulder girdle, and then you can switch sides, going for the other foot. Maybe you have a touchdown. Over time, you might find that you will be able to catch the foot. Lego the ego, foot does not have to get caught today. It's an exciting moment. Enjoy every step of the way. And then slowly release back down. Quick child's pose if you need it. Consider how much range of motion your humerus head bone has in your shoulder socket. And also consider how, as you make each of those angles a part of the formation of your structure, you can build strength in all of those degrees and therefore really making your heart space bulletproof and cultivating a tremendous amount of strength surrounding the shoulder girdle, surrounding the shoulder joint, and, and creating a protective, fortified back bend in so doing. So, for the forearm balance, usually we're here. And for the hollow back, right, we come practically here. And then for scorpion, we come back through our normal forearm balance and actually pull the forearms here. So we can actually gaze forward, right? It's, it's crazy how, look, look at that insane amount of range of motion that we can create. So that can, again, protect our back bends. 
and also reestablish the divine masculine, which is important. So now we're going to take our hollow back and start to work forward and back. And again, this is a very useful tool that my teacher trainer taught me, and I've been utilizing this ever since as a very vital aspect of my repertoire. Very, very simple. And again, I'm doing it next to the wall. As you get better, you may not need the wall, but next to the wall is a good place to start. So find your normal form balance. Take it up and then you can work into your hollow back. Again, the wall is there if you need it. And then start to pull the gaze forward. So notice how we're going into our scorpion again. If you're, if you're new to scorpion, you can bring one foot to the wall so as to bring balance. And then start to pull foot to head. Back into your hollow back. Utilizing that whole range of motion of humerus head bone and shoulder socket. And then eventually, of course, both feet, same time. So just a useful skill set to have. And it will give you so much more control in your inversion practice as well. In many ways, we can build in the lower planes to take us up into the higher planes with more success. Now, finally, we graduate to the Dwaypada Viparita Dandasana. And hopefully you're feeling your heart space opening more and more as we move through these progressions. So for this one, we're going to take both feet to the wall and straighten the legs. And you don't have to bring the feet all the way down to the ground. But just notice how the wall is miraculous in working Dwey Pada Vipreta Dandasana because you can press and straighten through your legs at all of these degrees. So explore that. Also great use for stall bars or if you have a wall with little ledges on it. Also a great idea. So we'll make our way into forearm balance. I'm trying to get just in the frame here so <laughs> we can do this. Sweet, okay, coming up into your hands, or your forearm balance. You don't have to have a certain amount of control because you do want to be able to connect to the wall. So again, this is why you may want to revisit this video. Coming into your Dwey Pada with the feet connecting to the wall. Now press the feet into the wall and pull the energy directly into the heart space. You can walk the feet down. Again, pause maybe in another angle. Maybe all the way down to the ground. And then use the floorboard. Walk the feet up and over. Chakrasana. All right. So that's what I have for you in this part of breaking the wheel. And there will be many more parts. So we're just starting with the fundamentals so we can build from a strong foundation. And this is a very, this is a big chunk. This was definitely, it's still a bite-sized chunk, but it was a big chunk. So take your time digesting this video. Watch it multiple times if you need to. Try it multiple times if you need to. And eventually it will be second nature. And Again, you won't need the wall, but it's nice to utilize the wall to find our alignment and so that we can continue to do this work and continue to create more space for the breath. Quick counterbalance measure, seated twist. You can take your Armatsandrasana, right? Twist up the spine after deep back bending, always to massage the spongy intervertebral discs. And 
depending upon what you're doing after, right? So if you did this video late at night, I would highly recommend a forward fold, either Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold with the legs together, or you can take shoulder stand. It's great to use the wall for shoulder stand. If you are going out and about, maybe get in some side bends, which I love doing side bends from Eagle Lakes because then you can really root down through the sit bones, side bend from side to side to get all of the motions of the spine and maintain symmetry and balance. So, so important. A lot of our work is in the thoracic spine, but in order to work into the thoracic spine, we need to honor all of the different movements of the spine so that we're evenly expanding. And yes, your spine will get longer as you do this work, believe it or not, you will get taller. Uh, not by too much, so. <laughs> I, I feel like I grew definitely quite a bit when I started doing back bends because all of that energy is compressed, but also your physical body is compressed and you might be slightly hunching. So as you do this work, notice and allow yourself to receive this more open heart space, right? And notice also that it's fortified too. So if you create a tremendous amount of back bend potential without also creating strength, then your auric field can be quite porous and that does lend towards energetic vampirism. So be cautious of that as you continue to open up the heart space. Make sure you're also complementing that flexibility with strength so that you can protect yourself from energy leeches. Really, really important as we move through this the Great Purge together. And again, I'm hoping to continue to post more videos on the reg and it will be for the the real ascension, I like to call it, or the real love and light. Like, let's actually start doing this work. And Uranus is in Taurus, so again, we will be doing arm balances and inversions. Uh, I can't always teach them in my studio classes because I need to honor whoever shows up and it is a co-creation, but here I can do whatever I want because it's my YouTube channel. So uh, I'm going to focus, especially on the upper half of our sphere of existence, which has been largely negated for centuries, if not millennia perceivably so from our perspective. So <laughs> we've got a lot of atoning to do in the upper half, <laughs> but we're going to do it and it's going to be really fun. So stay tuned in and, you know, like, subscribe, all the things so that this comes up as a bigger algorithm. But, you know, whoever tunes in is meant to tune in and this is not obviously for the faint of heart. So this is for the strong lion hearts. <laughs> and we all got a little bit of Leo in us. So Tap in, tune in, you are the universe. Thank you on behalf of the universe for doing this work, for expanding, for sending more energy up for the collective so that we may all resonate with a higher vibrational frequency. And that you have done if you made it to the end of this video, even just by watching, even if you just watched it because you were able to even mentally start receiving through osmosis, absorbing, steeping in, some of these these movements and these shapes and these transitions that do require a tremendous amount of concentration dharana number six of the eight limbs of yoga so even just flexing your mental muscles a little bit to intake how to do that work with your mental faculties utilized for holding space and reactivating your energetic pyramid your energetic it's, it's a it's a multi-dimensional pyramid uh, of, of energetic um, conductivity, right? As we hold this space, we are actually illuminating the nadis so that the energy can flow through uninterrupted without distortion. And this is, this is not easy work. So again, I thank you very, very much for doing this work. The highest light within me truly sees the highest light within you. And in fact, 